Hello and welcome to the Knitting Traditions podcast. My name is Inga and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about my knitting. Uh, if you're a returning viewer, this episode is coming out a bit later than usually. Um, I've just haven't been able to figure out how to start this podcast with everything that's happening in the world. Um, the war in Ukraine is has been on my mind a lot. Um, it's scary what's happening in the world right now. It feels like the world is moving from one catastrophe to the other. And I wish the world would have learned from its history, but it appears not. And the thought of World War Three maybe becoming a reality is really scary. I feel for the people in Ukraine. I've been trying to donate to good causes and it's just, it's been heavy on my mind and it felt a bit weird to record a, a podcast. Ukraine is not the only place in the world with conflict right now, that's also on my mind. But yeah, my thoughts are with everyone who is not in a safe place right now and I hope we can all help in whatever way we can and that you're staying safe and taking care of yourself if you can and um, yeah <sighs> okay so yeah I've recorded this several times I'm not eloquent I don't know how to speak about this in a good way but that was an attempt at least um, yeah I'm going to talk about all the things that I've made. Maybe we can start with what I am wearing. I'm wearing my watch cap hat by Pearl Soho, which is a free pattern. It's um, a two by two rib. I've worn this before. I just got off a really long shift and I wanted to record because there's actually some sunlight before taking um, a long soak in a bathtub so this is for the bad hair day and then I am wearing a very comfortable sweater this is the Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter which I knit in Usk from Hillsborg and I didn't do decreases on the sleeves so my sleeves are straight I also did the body longer before the color work and I did the same length um, on the sleeves before starting the color work. I really really like this pattern. I think the color work is stunning and I'm loving the colors and this has become one of my favorite yarns, the Usk from Hillesvog. It's, it's a really nice rustic yarn that's not scratchy to me. It would be scratchy to some people. Um, but it has like a nice dry feeling. It gets a little bit of fluff with with washing Not too much. Just a little bit of a Little bit of a halo if you can see that um, Yeah, it's really nice And I have finished some projects Finally now I can talk about a test knit that I did this is a pair of socks that I test knit for Melody Hoffman from B Mandarines. She um, finally released this pattern and the name, she, cha she put the name of this up, I think it started with A, I'll put it here. This is a beautiful top-down sock pattern that combines a bit of uh, knitting and embroidery and it's just super cute. And I don't enjoy knitting bobbles, but these are so pretty that I will probably knit more in the future. This um, pattern recommended using Tuca wool fingering, which is 100% fingering wool, non superwash, no nylon content, which is different from their sock base, which contains nylon. And it was a dream to knit with. The fabric turned out really, really, really beautiful. It's 
it feels really soft. It has a bit of a fluff to it. I'm really interested to see how this wears, if it will get holes easily. This will not be in boot socks for me, it will be in the house socks. Um, and it made me want to knit a sweater in this yarn. Um, I think I knit this on two millimeter needles. So knitting a sweater on two millimeter needles, don't think that's going to happen. Um, but it's just a beautiful fabric. Uh, so I will probably try and make a sweater with this in the future. And what else can I say? So this I will put into the natural sock along that um, Melody is hosting this year. And it could also be used in my rustic knit along for this year, but I don't participate myself. If you do want to participate in the rustic knit along, for now it's on um, Instagram with the hashtag rustic knit along FO to win prizes throughout the year. And on that note, yeah. This podcast has received a prize from the Perth Knitting Festival in Scotland. They have donated this um, yarn, Dyed by Dye Ninja, and this color is Eva's Lippy. So um, in the message, they told me that this was the colorway for the Perth Festival, which is going to be held in... September and I'm really really hoping to go and this is Ninja Toes Fingering which is 50% Corydale and 50% British Mohair and it's around 395 meters per 100 grams and it's a really really bright uh, saturated red so this will be going into one of the prizes for the Rustic Knit Along I don't know when we will draw the first one we will run it through the whole year and I will probably draw, uh, definitely draw a prize at the end of the year, but probably more prizes before. So this is going into the giveaway content for that. So yes, I think that was all I wanted to say about this pattern. Um, besides, this is a really simple vanilla sock. I thought it was beautiful. And oh yeah. Um, when she released this sh that day, she also had um, she all the all the sales of her patterns were donated to um, one. It all got a bit mi mixed up in my head because I I bought patterns from several designers who all donated to charities helping in Ukraine. Uh, but the day she released this, Melody had the same concept where all of her sales were donated to uh, one one of the bigger charities to help in Ukraine. So I bought several patterns from her that day. And um, let's see, I've also finished since last time, I finished one of Jessie Maid's designs. Um, is it the secret crop or the summer crop? I'll put the name below. Um, this is a pattern that I've been wanting to knit ever since seeing, um, uh, Kat from Heather and Hops knit this. She uses these, uh, bralettes, uh, as underwear or tops underneath her sweaters all the time. This is the one that has a four by four rib. And when I knit it, I didn't swatch, um, it looked okay, but as I've been wearing it, it has stretched out significantly. I think it will scrunch back up with washing, um, but it has definitely increased in size with wearing, because I've already been wearing this quite a lot. Um, I used, I had one skein. This is the purest colorway in the Lux Non Superwash base from Aya Fibers, uh, who is based in Germany. And this is all that I had left. I played Yarn Chicken with this 
because um, it start you start knitting at the bottom. So I think I made it just a little bit shorter than the pattern recommended because I was scared I was going to run out and I'm really happy because I would have run out. There's really not many grams left in this color. So this is a DK base in non superwash. It's 100% merino and it is so soft. This has really been so nice to wear next to skin. Usually I prefer more of a solid color, but I think this colorway is really beautiful and it doesn't have too much of a pooling, which is nice. Um, it's so nice next to skin. However, it is a very soft yarn, so I think that is why it stretches out more than my woolly, woolly, woolly yarns would, because those are more toothy and stick more together. So I think the next time I make this top, I will use a more rustic, uh, toothy yarn. It will not be as lovely on my skin as this yarn, because this is, this is amazing. If you are very sensitive, then this base from Aya Fibers is beautiful. And this yarn was gifted to me, but I did not have to talk about it here, but I'm telling you that I really, really enjoyed the softness of this. And it doesn't seem to be peeling uh, so far, and I've worn it uh, a good amount. Um, so it's holding up nicely, except for the fact that it's it's stretched out a bit. Um, but then again, I could have swatched and washed the swatch to see how it would have behaved and then maybe knit a smaller size to compensate for that. So that is also my fault. But yes, this is beautiful. Um, I'm going to make more tops like this, but maybe in a, in a thinner, more woolly woolly yarn to make it cinch in a bit more. And then I finished another project, which has been getting a lot of wear, um, almost daily since I finished it for the past two, three weeks. Um, and it's already getting a bit thin on the butt. So this are, these are the Hush Pants by Pickles. Um, it's sort of a jogger's pants, um, this is knit in Pickles Cozy by Pickles. It's pilling a little bit, not too bad, considering how much I've been wearing it. On the butt, the fabric has seemed to almost thin out a little bit, if you can see that here. It's, it's, yeah. That's not good. Um, but these are, and they've stretched quite a lot with wear. These are incredibly soft and incredibly warm and they are not itchy at all. With the pattern, I had some struggles with the pockets, which I talk about in previous episodes. Uh, in essence, I found the pattern hard to understand when it came to the pockets. But other than that, it was really good. The yarn is amazing, but the butt, it seems to be not holding up um, too well there, which is a shame. I hope it doesn't wear holes in it, but if it's already gotten like this now, it's a bit worrisome. You don't want to knit a pair of pants and then have holes in your butt after just a few weeks. The fabric is a lot thinner here than it is on the front. So that probably has to do with, you know, that's where I sit and friction from standing up and sitting down. So yeah, I'm hoping it will survive a lot longer, but this is worrying me a little bit, that it's a lot thinner in the fabric on the butt than the front. It's stretched out quite a lot. But I love them. But now that I am looking at the difference between the front fabric here and the back there, this is 
thinning out. But yeah, the hush pens and the cozy yarn, the cozy yarn is really, really soft and nice. So that's another soft yarn recommendation if you have access to pickles yarns. It's not the most affordable, but it is really nice and soft. So that is a finished object that I've been wearing a lot. It makes me want to knit more knitted pants because I probably have like 50 sweaters and I wear knits every day. Um, but it would be nice to have some more pants. These were really nice to have at the cabin. So maybe I should make another pair in a different yarn, maybe a different um, pattern as well, so that I could have more knitted pants. Because I think this year I'm going to try to knit more things that I need, rather than just knit what I like to knit for the process knitting. Because I am a process knitter, I don't need 50 more sweaters. I love knitting sweaters. So I, I need to break it up and knit a few other things that I also find a use for or make more gifts. But it's not as fun knitting gifts as knitting for myself. Because half the fun is finding out what I like. <laughs> and let's see. So last time, let's go into whips. So last time I was talking about how I had made some swatches with my cones. And when I do swatches, I put purl stitches in the swatch to um, document what needle size I used for the swatch. So in this swatch, I used 4.5 because I have, and probably I can see it that well, I have four purl bumps in here and then some knit stitches and then another purl bump there. So that's 4.5. That makes sense to me. You could also do yarn overs. And I'm lazy, so instead of doing four different swatches, I did the swatches in the same, sort of. So when I finished a bit of fabric, I did a, a purl section, which I do on the knit side, because then it's knit stitches and it's faster. <laughs> and then I just changed colors and I did that throughout. So this was a holst cone that I held together with a, a very similar colored brown silk mohair and then this is the same holst cone but with a more rust colored silk mohair and it's really fascinating how the rust in that silk mohair overpowers the brown color of the fingering weight because the fingering weight is the same in these two swatches but it's a lot more similar to this in color so um it's, it's fun to see how when you pair something with a silk mohair, how the color changes. Um, you can't really see. It doesn't look like two different colors. They just really blend together and create this beautiful color. And then this was a almond colored. Because I think this was the coffee color in Holst, I think. And then this is the almond color in Holst, which I held together with. Camerose Monosrolle, which is a Danish um, yarn. This one right here, which is 68% baby alpaca, 12% merino, 16% polymat, and 4% polyester. And it has a Stellina effect in it. You, you can see the little sparkles. So that was one swatch. And then the top here is woolen knit, which I held double. So no silk mohair in that, just the woolen knit. So these are all a lot softer to the touch than this one. <laughs> um, so after doing the swatch, uh, the gauge was off on all of them for <laughs> the patterns that I had in mind. So I did swatches in my two favorites from those. So, of course, the rust, but also I really like the light colored one um, because I do have a lot of rust items. And when I showed the swatches to my boyfriend, he quickly said that I should make the light one um, because he thinks I have too many rust colored things, which I don't think you can have, but okay. 
so this I used let's see if I did I do what I'm supposed to and put in some pearl bumps yes so here I did 3.5 millimeter needles for both of them and they both um, got the right gauge so the yarn that I went for in the end was the whole super soft in the color almond they come in 500 gram cones and I've used a lot but there's still a lot left on the cone so I could probably get another sweater project out of it I think um, I could weigh it and see and it doesn't say how much meterage but it's like a light fingering weight uh, it blooms quite a bit with washing because the whole super soft has spinning oils in in it still but it's it's not bad at least this one is not bad at all and it's a really nice light color like white ot kind of color and i paired it with the camerose monostrola um i think i initially had five balls of this and then i was afraid i was gonna run out so i bought another one and that's this one which i have broken into and I really hope that I have enough to finish this whip. So, this is the whip that I am almost, almost finished with. This is the Anson cardigan. Um, I'll put the designer name below. It's knit back and forth, and then you do the sleeves in the round, and it has this sort of tie function in the front this really does not show well with before it's finished and i can try it on but the pattern told me to block it before doing the button band because it's going to have a button band and then you can sort of tie it at the bottom like that um so i still need to do the button band uh it's dry now i washed it the golden stellina really does not show up on camera but it is in here just trust me and it softened up beautifully with washing um it doesn't have a lot of drape but it has a little bit of drape it um, got a lot more fluffier with washing the stiffness of the whole holes super soft softens up a lot I'm hoping that when I put the button band on it, it's gonna sit nicely over my shoulders. I always have that struggle with cardigans that they fall off my shoulders. So I hope that's not gonna be an issue with this one. I hope the button band helps close the space over the shoulders so that it's closer to my neck. I hope that the button band with buttoned up is gonna hold it and that it's not gonna slide off. So I will let you know once I have finished that, um, but it is almost done. It's just the button band left and I hope I have enough yarn to finish it. And then I need to find some buttons. Um, I haven't quite decided yet. I think either I'm going to go for gold buttons because there's a bit of gold Stellina in it or what I'm leaning most towards is finding some wooden wooden buttons i think that would be really nice as well and then i have i have more whips it's a bit of a mess here same as my head is a bit of a mess these days <laughs> um but i have finished i have finished one sock and i don't have it on a sock blocker i probably could put it on sock blocker let's see let's see because it, it looks a bit nicer on the sock blocker doesn't it okay so yeah i finished the first of my socks using the uh stripy cat yarns she's from the uk and this is the hagrid base so this is a non-superwash nylon free sock yarn that she dyes up and it comes with a mini and the mini is the same colorway as one of the stripes in the socks so i have finished the first one since last time and i have barely 
started the second. So this was kind of my on-the-go sock and stripes are really addicting. But since starting it, I have also started another on-the-go project, which has gotten a lot more attention because it's been even more mindless. So this has been a little bit on the back burner, but I'm going to finish them because I think they are beautiful and I have some more self-striping yarns from her. Sorry that I want to knit up. So yes, that is one of my whips. Um, I also have uh, another sock whip that I showed in the last episode, but it really hasn't gotten a lot of attention, so I'm not gonna show it until I've put some more work in. But um, I've been thinking for a while that I want to make sort of a scrappy blanket um but technically the blanket that i've started isn't super scrappy because i have bought yarn specifically for this a uh, blanket um if you follow skeins of dreams mega she is running a blanket knit along or make along for this whole year so i think i'm gonna put this um project into her make along I think she calls the make along blanket of dreams make along or something like that. I'll put I'll put it here. Um I just know that I'm attending it because I thought it was a great idea. So I have started a blanket. And I have knitted quite a bit for this. So um what I'm doing is I am knitting a bunch of squares in different colors using um, Rauma Finul, which is one of my favorite Norwegian yarns. In Norway, this is um, a quite an affordable yarn. It's 100% wool. It's 175 meters per 50 grams. So it's a bit thicker than your normal fingering weight so maybe it's a sport sport weight and it's a hundred percent Norwegian wool and it's um, produced locally in Norway and it's in Rumstal. I've been to their factory it's lovely if you ever visit Norway I recommend going and they have so many colors in this space it's amazing and they have a lot of colors in my color palette as well. So I was reading an article about um, different mills and yarn producers in Norway. Because knitting is a big part of the Norwegian culture. And we have a lot of different producers of wool. And uh, minimally processed wool is easily available for affordable prices in Norway. We are really lucky in that way. Uh, but in this article, they were looking at how much of the fiber um, that these different producers use are actually Norwegian fiber. And I was really surprised to see that almost none of them used a majority of Norwegian fiber. They would buy most of their fibers from, let's say, Australia, which has a lot of uh, merino production, etc. Uh, mohair from South Africa, uh, alpaca from South America, etc. And I was really surprised by that because we have, we have so much good quality wool in Norway, so why not use it? And in the article, they said that it's because the new generations don't want itchy clothing, they don't want the rustic yarn, they want the super soft merinos and uh, the no itch factor, which which I get. But I'm like, there are people like me who appreciate the. Um, minimally processed, um, locally produced, uh, you know what you're getting kind of product. And I was happy to see that my two favorite um, yarn producers were the ones who used the most Norwegian um, Norwegian uh, fiber in their production, which was Rauma and Hillesvog, which was a plus point in my book. So this is a little ode to the Norwegian fiber, this blanket. I'm trying to pick 
almost all of their um, green, browns, and rust colors paired with some neutrals. And so, so far I have made two of this dark mossy green. And if you want to join me on this, um, it's super easy. You can use whatever yarn you have, but I recommend them all being the same weight so that your squares are the same size. I cast on 30 stitches on 3.75 millimeter needles, and then I knit until I have 29 garter bumps on each side, and then I bind off on the first 30th uh, garter bump, if that makes any sense. Um, and that's because for my gauge, that gives me the perfect square. To find out your perfect square, what you could do is just, when you think it looks like a square, fold this up, like so. And then you see it's not a perfect square yet, I still have this much to go. Um, so that's an easy way to find out when you have a perfect square, because when you have a perfect square, it should align like a triangle, uh, let's say your needle is here, it should align like, like this. And this green, I think I actually bought this green at their mill, I think it was going out of production or was cheaper for some reason, I don't know, but this is the color 0486. And then I have knit two in this sort of ochre golden brown. And for this one, this isn't a scrap from my stash and I don't have the label, but this is what the color looks like. And then this, I think, is one of their new colors. And this is sort of a dark brown, but it's like marl almost, I would say. I'll see if I... Yeah, so that's this color, and it's the color 0464. So I, having a whole ball, ball of the Rauma PT2 Phenol, I get five squares. That's a lot of squares from 50 gram balls, so this is a really good scrappy blanket. Um, and if I use, uh, if I have two two of these, then I can squeeze out 12, no, 11, 11, so five and a half uh, squares from one ball, so 11 if I have two. And what I'm going to do with all these squares in the end is I think I'm going to use a light colored yarn like this one, which is 4078, and then I'm going to crochet an edge around the squares and then try to crochet them together, see if it looks nice, or maybe I'll just use a needle to um, mattress stitch them. We shall see. This is one of my favorite colors, which Matthias, my boyfriend, did not want too much of in the blanket. <laughs> it's, um, I kept the label. This is the color. 4121, that's the rest. And then I've, I'm also, my, my favorite colors in this are the heathered ones. Um, they have made more of the heathered colorways recently instead of the pure solid colorways. Um, and I don't know if I have another one with a label. Let's see, yeah, I do. So this is the 4129 colorway. And I have made five of this so far. I've made six of this one. This was Matthias's favorite color, which is one of the neutrals, which is fine. I need a lot of neutrals to compensate for all the other colors. This is 0406. I think this would be a really nice blanket with just one or two colors as well, but in squares divided. I think it would look nice. This is a more gold heathered um, color than the scrap that I was using. And let's see if I have... The color is 4125. And then I have the light gray 
which is 0404. So this has been a real pleasure to knit on because it doesn't require any thinking. I'm just knitting back and forth and then making sure that it's the right length and then binding off. And then I, it doesn't get boring because the next square I can choose a different color and then that's kind of stimulating. So it's been a good project in the past weeks and days. Um, so, so much that I've had to make myself knit on some of my more complex things, just so that I'm not, I don't only have squares to show you, but it's been a really nice uh, project. And Rauma had a day in the past weekend where all of their sales, like all the money from, from their sales were donated to a charity to help Ukraine. And I wasn't going to buy any more yarn, but it was for a good cause, so I bought lots of yarn, so now I'm waiting for more yarn. So I got a few more colorways to put into the blanket, and then I bought some um, sweater quantities to use for traditional Norwegian-style kofte, which is sort of a cardigan jacket. Uh, it's the traditional one with lots of color work and that you steak and cut. So that's going to be really interesting. Um, but yeah, it was for a good cause and... Yeah. I'm also really going to like the yarn. So that was one whip. I have one more whip to show, but it's, it's barely, barely a whip. Um... I have this yarn, this I think is the Rusty Pekin colorway, yeah, this is the Rusty Pekin colorway by GC Rennie or Knit Rennie in Scotland. I bought several cones uh, recently and I just thought this colorway was so beautiful and rich. It has lighter and darker and even some blue specks to this brown. So I, I caked up a big cake from this. Um, I have a ball winder. I just put this on the floor and then with my left hand, I was just holding the strand between my fingers to put a bit of tension and then I was winding and it created the most beautiful, huge yarn cake. So I held two strands double and I made a swatch and it softened up so nicely. I will say that knitting with this yarn was softer on my hands than knitting with the whole super soft. Uh, this, this one doesn't have that much spinning oil. A lot of the cones from uh, Knit Rennie or JC Rennie had a lot of spinning oil in this. This was one of the more fluffy ones with less oil. And it's been really nice to knit with and the fabric is just beautiful and again i have some garter bumps here i knit this watch with a four millimeter needle and i got approximately 21 stitches for the gauge so what i cast on and this is barely barely uh, a whip I cast on the neckline for the uh, No Frills sweater. This is one of the first sweater patterns that I ever knit. I knit it years ago with a cotton and silk mohair that I gifted to my grandmother who taught me how to knit. And I've been wanting to knit the pattern again just to have that really basic raglan sweater. I've knit the Oslo and Stockholm sweater by Petite Knit, but I'm not a huge fan of drop shoulders, so I've wanted to knit a basic um, no frills with the raglan, which is my preferred sweater um, fit in the yoke. So yeah, that's what I've started. It's gonna look like a dark brown college sweater but it's going to have a lot of interest in the sunlight if you go up close and look at the colors. And I think it's going to make me happy. 
Um, do I need more brown rustic looking sweaters? No, but I want them. So I am making it and um, it's looking beautiful. I really like how the fabric feels. It's going to be beautiful in a sweater, I think. Nice and soft in a rustic way. <laughs> Um, beautiful color and I think it's gonna hold up really well it's gonna be really good quality um, hopefully it doesn't pill too much I don't think it's gonna pill um, based on how the swatch feels and looks so yeah really happy with this uh, new whip on the go I just need to tear myself a bit, a bit away from all the the beautiful squares <laughs> that I am knitting on so from that, just gonna segue into um, some acquisitions. So if that's not your cup of tea, uh, I will see you next time. Uh, stay safe and well, I hope. I have acquired two more cones to my collection of yarn. So I, I think I started knitting from cones three three years ago i was in christian sand which, which is where my boyfriend is from and a local yarn store had a sale on some cones that they had which uh were holes super soft cones actually and i knit i started knitting a huge green blanket which i showed when i started the podcast it was uh knit on three three or 3.5 millimeter needles and it was in moss stitch so knit pearl knit pearl the whole blanket. I think it was close to half a million stitches uh, by the time I was done. It was a lot of work, but I really love that blanket. I also knit a cable sweater last year with uh, the whole super soft cinnamon held double. And since then, I've wanted to get more cones. And then I was inced by Heather and Hops. Uh, with Woolly Knits and also Crea Bea is a huge fan of them. She's running a knit along Which you should check out with Woolly Knits and uh, So I have several cones from them. I've knit one sweater the Ranunculus in Woolly Knit And then I found I came across the Knit Rennie or G JC Rennie, which I just showed and then somebody tipped me about Jameson and Smith that they also had cones so I got two cones and yes technically I have an orange cone up there from Knit Rennie but this is a different orange <laughs> this is more heathered this is a bit more of a muddy orange sort of um this is the color Ooh. 1285 Okay, one, two, eight, five. <laughs> I think on the website they had other names, not just numbers. Um, but yes, this is beautiful. It seems um, more fluffy than the other cones that I have, like that it's a bit thicker of a yarn. And this looked really beautiful online. In real life, it's a lot more blue than I thought it would be. I It looked more green online. Um, this is the shade FC62. So it's, it's more blue, <laughs> but it is still beautiful. Um, but I thought it was more of a sagey green. So I don't know what I will use this for just yet um, but it is nice to have a color that's not exactly the same as all the other colors that I already have it would be nice to put in some color work or some gift knits we shall see so yes that's 500 grams each um, all the cones that I have are 500 grams except for the knit Rennie which is 850 grams so even even with the shipping and the taxes and everything it's it's a good price for the amount of yarn that 
you get. So I am a huge fan of minimally processed, affordable, woolly yarns. And cones for me go into that quota because you do get a lot of yardage for the money, even with the shipping, which is ridiculously expensive to get to Norway. Uh, but I think I did a calculation what I paid for the... I did that with the Knit Runny. What I paid for the cones and what I paid for the shipping and what I paid for the taxes and all of that together, I think I paid like 65 pounds, British pounds, for 850 grams of woolly wool, which is a really good price um, compared to a lot of other brands so yeah and on um, another note so yeah we did get the the prize for the rustic knit along from the perth knitting festival and then shelly a viewer of the podcast she sent me some soaps so i did not have to show this in the podcast but i thought her soaps were just beautiful so she has cape six soaps i'm not sure if she even sells these but she should. Um, when I got this parcel, even through the cardboard, I could smell these. So they have a really strong fragrance. I am going to put them in my bathroom, but I've been storing them in my knitting room just because the smell of the lavender one, I feel there's this, a placebo effect of it keeping moths away. <laughs> but this is the Lavender by The Sea. So she makes these soaps herself. And they are just stunning. And I finally got a bathtub installed, so I'm gonna enjoy these. This is the shoreline one that she sent. And then this one is the saltwater rose, which has a rose petal on top. And then the I think it says non-Easter, and this one smells manly to me, so I'm going to give this to Matthias to use, so he'll smell nice. Not that he smells bad, but yeah, this is like a minty, minty smell, which is really nice. So that was from Shelly from Cape Six Soaps. And then I, I, I think it was two or three episodes ago, I was talking about um some yarn that i had received really rustic and beautiful that i wanted to use for a blanket so i asked for some different um blanket suggestions and my favorite one was one that i could not buy <laughs> online it was um a blanket from an old book i think it's an old american book uh, so what i did is i went on ebay and I found it on eBay. This is American School of Needlework, the ultimate book of knit afghans. And it has 19 designs in it, and I haven't opened it yet, um, which I probably can. Uh, so right now I have a blanket of needles, but when I have the brain power for something more complex, I'll be casting on uh, a a blanket with cables. At least that's my plan. So let's see if I can find. There's lots of beautiful patterns in here. It's, I don't know how old this book is. Don't they usually put that inside books? What age it's printed or something? I don't know. But it looks old. Printed in the USA. Mm. So now I am struggling to find the pattern. So this pattern is one that I saw on um, a different podcaster, Anna. Um, I'll put the name of her podcast below so I don't say the wrong name. I really like her podcast. She's gone into more of a vlogging style recently, which is really nice. She made this blanket. Um, okay, so the blanket is called Fisherman. It's designed by Rita Weiss. 
And the picture inside the book is tiny and black and white, so that's not gonna show up. But on the back here, it's it's this blanket right here. So it has different different braids or different cables in sections. And then it has sort of a macrame edging. So the yarn that I have are two slightly different shades. So I'm going to do the different segments um, alternating the colors and whichever one, because one of them I have more of than the other. So that I'll use for the macrame uh, edge trimmings that you see there. So that's the plan. And this is the book that I got, in case you're interested. There are so many beautiful blanket patterns in this book. And I'll probably make more in the futures. These two look really nice as well. This is the one I'm going to make with the yarn I have. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of beautiful patterns in this book. It's a shame they're not available online. At least I could not find them. Um, but now I have the book. And I think that was all the acquisitions and the knitting that I have. If you want to join me with knitting the squares, like I said, any yarn could work. Just cast on the same amount of stitches with the same weight yarn and knit until you have a square. And then we'll figure out how to join them later. But I think it's going to be nice. It's a nice mindless but stimulating project and um yeah remember to uh be nice to one another share the love help where you can and um, take some time to take care of yourself when you can and i hope that this video was okay i, I feel a bit strange and tired and weird about recording but um I really appreciate the society that we have on here. I feel like knitters are usually through and through really good and nice people. And it's a great community that I'm grateful to be a part of. And on that note, I will hopefully see you soon. Stay well. And yeah. Bye.